Well, controversy is brewing this morning over a photo published in the Daily Mail showing soccer star David Beckham's four-year-old daughter with the pacifier in her mouth. So is this doing more harm than good, everyone asked, and where should parents draw the line with the binky? We're going to ask our parenting panel that question. Joining us now is psychotherapist Tom Kirsting, parenting expert Darby Fox, and psychotherapist Nell Gibson Daly. Thank you for joining us here today. Thank so, you. what do you think about this? Because they're, they're kind of harping on the fact that this four year old still has a binky. Is that okay, Tom? Well, you know, I feel bad for the Beckhams because I feel like all this stuff is kind of hovering over them, but. Aren't they the parents? They are the parents, and I have, in my private practice, I've seen situations where kids have developed anxiety disorders with oral fixation type things. So what they really have to be careful of, um, hopefully they have friends that are alerting them to this, is that their child, if that child is becoming dependent on this uh, pacifier, they're going to have a larger problem, problem on their hands down the road now. Aren't we all dependent on something? I mean, we all walk around with our cell phones all the time, and I can't, I can't wait to get to my pack of gum. It's not much different. It's like I, like I, like I was thinking, if you take a, 15, uh, a, a cell phone away from a 15-year-old, Think about what the reaction is going to be. Okay. You take a pacifier away from a four-year-old. Darby, where do you stand on this? I think it's not great. It's time for them to start to work away from it, but I don't see that we see many kids with pacifiers going to school. There are dental concerns, but she's obviously got this. It's kind of a transitional object for her, mm -hmm. and you see many kids, four-year-olds, with a blanket, a bunny, something that they carry with them, and it seems that that's what she is doing with it. She's got a big family. We sometimes are concerned she might not be able to speak correctly, but a four-year-old with lots of older brothers, a huge big life that she runs, I think it's probably okay. It's time for them to start to think about getting rid of it, but I don't think it's an issue. It's almost worse that everybody's kind of criticizing them for having it, isn't it? I mean, you obviously all care. You're in the business of caring, but a lot of the critics out there don't. Now, what do you say? I mean, I think that, you know, on the scale of parenting, things that you do wrong, it's not that big of a crime. The thing that's interesting about this is that it can open up a discussion about how to actually get the pacifier away from a four-year-old. It's not easy. It's not easy, but we say that three days break a habit. So when they're infants, if you take a pacifier away from them and go cold turkey, it usually takes about three nights and they're fine. With a four-year-old, you can do lots of fun games to try to get kids to wean off the pacifier. And one of the things you can do is replace the attachment object, which is the pacifier, with a new attachment object, like a blanket, and make it a fun game, which you do overnight with a reward system. So a little fairy comes and can take your binky, and the next day you get a little toy, and the fairy goes to all the kids who don't have binkies around the world. Right. They have so, to be ready for that, though, because I've tried it too early. Yeah. I actually tried it with a three-year-old. Yeah. It didn't go well, and we ended up going to get a new binky, and Mommy needed a binky by the end of the day. <laughs> uh, there, there was a response by the Beckhams on Instagram. Why do people feel they have the right to criticize the parents about their own children without having any facts? So they fought back there, really defending their privacy and right as a parent. Now, let me ask you about Target, because this is something interesting going around. The retailer has just announced that Friday it will phase out gender-based signage in some departments, toys and bedding. What do you think? I, I think we're going a little overboard with that. I understand there's this whole gender neutral agenda going on, and I actually have clients of mine that are, uh, don't really know what gender they are. But what about people, you know, the question I have is what about the, I don't want to confuse kids that are young when we take them to a toy store, with having them question what their gender is. That, that's the problem I have with it. I think Target, after reading the comments, um, a lot of people are not happy with it, and I saw people stating that they're not going to shop there anymore. So I think they, I think they might have stepped a little bit overboard. It'll be a test market for sure. I respectfully disagree. I think it's not a big deal at all. Kids don't go in there, especially younger kids, aren't reading. So they aren't saying this is a boy or a girl toy. Mm. They're drawn to certain things. And there isn't gender confusion. The gender issue is more neurological and biological, and that comes differently than selecting a toy yeah, I or it. sheets. I, I actually think it's a great idea. I think the most important thing for children is that they explore across gender. Everything about that we've learned with research is that we need children to be curious in order to start the domino effect of learning. God knows which one of these children have the cure for cancer inside of them or are going to be the next president. The more they explore across neutral, gender neutral aisles, the better we are off as a society. Hmm. Interesting. Let us know what you think. And should this all be taking place at Target? Anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Hot topics today. We want to thank Tom Kirsting, Darby Fox, and thank Nell Gibson Daly for the